Quince is a brand that you have no doubt heard me mention countless times here on my YouTube channel, especially if you're a frequent watcher. And I thought for this month's brand review, I would focus all on Quince and talk through the different items that I have as I've got pieces across most of the categories that they have on the website. So I thought it would be a really helpful resource for those of you who have potentially been considering making a purchase. I always find it really helpful to see how things fit, how they look on someone, and to really get a sense of how an item hangs and drapes on the body when it is worn. Now I'm planning to do things a little bit differently this time around. So I have tried on all the items and I'm going to do a bit of a voiceover because the lighting hasn't been the best over the past fortnight. And I figured this would be the best way to also remain succinct because I can be a real chatty Kathy in these videos. I am going to pop a little timestamp here on the screen to sort of towards the end of the video where I talk through some of the key points about Quince and my overall thoughts about purchasing from them as well as how I've been able to make a purchase living here in Australia. And also for full transparency, I do just want to mention that some of the items I did receive as part of some work that I created for Quince, uh, but that really doesn't change my feelings and my overall thoughts on each garment. So I'm gonna dive into it now and we'll chat through all of the items that I have and just the collections that I own as a whole and then we'll get into the other nitty gritty details about quince. I feel like we really have to start at the very beginning with Quince's $50 cashmere sweater. I have this in a few colors. Right here I'm wearing it in the black and I have now got a really good sense of the wear and tear. My fawn colored one has absolutely zero pilling. It looks immaculate like it's brand new. However, I have noticed pilling on my black one. So I do just wanna mention that because I have previously said these don't pill. So that's a little bit of an update that there might be discrepancies between the colors. This is a really good basic crew neck sweater. It is really soft, it's not itchy at all. It is quite lightweight and thin, but you will find with cashmere that it will keep you really warm regardless. Uh, and it's just a good staple to have. And I think it's just worth highlighting the price. Again, it is $50. There really is no brand out there delivering this level of quality for that price. The next sweater that I'm wearing here is the Mongolian Cashmere Fisherman Crew Neck Sweater. And when I think of a fisherman sweater, I typically think of something that is really oversized and quite bulky. This has a much slimmer cut, which fits quite close to the body, which I think is quite well reflected in the uh, video here. I'm wearing these in a size small. This comes in a few different colors. I kind of have the camel color and then the dark gray, which I think are really good basics. I like the fact that the collar on these is doubled over. Um, um, and the sleeve length is ever so slightly long. If you are petite, you may find that you need to kind of scrunch these up or roll it over one. And again, the fabric isn't too bulky or thick, which makes it a really good contender for tucking into jeans and trousers. A good option for wearing to the office or on the weekend, kind of a great versatile piece and I love the ribbing on it. It just adds some interesting texture. Final cashmere piece that I have from Quince is called the Lux Baby Cashmere Sweatshirt. I have this in a gray and I really like the fact that it has that diamond detailing at the neckline. Just adds a slightly different detail uh, because it is otherwise a basic cashmere crew neck sweater. I do feel like this has a slightly slimmer fit than the crew neck that Quince offers. Um, and it is again, another good contender for wearing to the office or weekend. I actually think all three of these do that really nicely. And I forgot to mention that all of these sweaters are made using 100% grade A Mongolian cashmere. I find that this is pretty standard across the board though these days. So read into that what you will. I wanna move on to the alpaca knit pieces that I have. So starting with the baby alpaca wool cropped cardigan. I had this in the ivory. I really like the fact that it has the tortoiseshell buttons down the front and I was drawn to this because it is a crop style and I personally love wearing these as sweaters done up. Cardigans like this are a really great option if you are nursing as well because they're very practical. I'm sure I don't need to go into the reasons why. The composition of this is a blend. It has the baby alpaca wool, extra fine merino wool, and nylon. And this is something that I have actually found to be true of most alpaca sweaters out there at the moment that they are blended with some other fabrics. I do find that this is very kind of soft and plush. It has a really beautiful silky sort of a hand feel and it is not itchy at all. It does also feel really nice and cozy while having the sort of an airy vibe to it. Next we have the baby alpaca wool diamond stitch crew and this is a dupe for the Everlane diamond stitch 
alpaca net that they did a couple of years ago. I own that and I will say that the Ebeline one is thicker, but it also does have a slightly itchier texture to it. They have a different fabric composition. So again, this has that blend of alpaca wool, extra fine merino wool and nylon. So it's very sort of soft and it doesn't feel itchy or scratchy at all. I don't feel like I need another layer underneath. One thing that is highlighted quite well from the cutaways is the fact that this is sheer, so you do need to wear a flesh tone bra with it. It is a relaxed fit, and it doesn't quite have that same ballooned effect to the sleeve that the Eveline ones have, but you get a similar look. And again, because it is quite thin, it makes it really easy to tuck into jeans, trousers, or skirts. Final alpaca piece is the baby alpaca wool quarter zip. Again, same fabric composition, and it has that really nice, fluffy, cozy, cloud-like texture to it. I find that the zip on this is not really that smooth, and I think you can kind of see that in the cutaway when I am kind of trying to unzip and zip up the collar. It does sort of stick a little bit and I don't know if that's just the one that I received or if that is just a flaw in the design. I have the black. I'm, I actually sized up to a medium because I wanted it to be a little bit more of a boxy fit. This has a regular length so I find it cuts off around the hip. Again it is a good little basic to have. Um, also worth noting that alpaca wool is resistant to pilling so you aren't going to have that issue that you might have with a cashmere sweater. The final sweater I have, they no longer stock, but they do sell the exact same style in a different fabrication. So mine is a cotton and merino blend. On the website, they now sell it as a 100% organic cotton piece. This actual cardigan is brilliant. It is a real favorite of mine. I really like the cut, the way that it drapes and hangs on the body, the rib design, the fact that it's got the pockets. It's just really chic and cozy and I always felt really good every single time that I would put it on. I have this really lovely olive color. I do feel like mine has really started to show signs of wear and tear at this point because I have had it for a while and worn it Lows, like I've worn the heck out of this thing. Um, it is a really oversized fit, so I have the size small, and you can kind of see that on me it does have that really relaxed, effortless, nonchalant sort of a fit. If you are someone who has sensitive skin, then you'll probably really appreciate that the fabrication is now 100% cotton. I want to talk about linen next just because we are sort of making our way slowly towards summer here in Australia, and I have a few of the styles here. So I want to start with my favorite set, which has to be the 100% European linen long sleeved shirt, which I've paired here with the matching shorts. I'll start with the shirt first. I've sized up to a large and personally, I really like a shirt like this that fits a little bit more on the oversized side because I think that you have the versatility of being able to wear it open like a little jacket. It can be a cover up when you go to the beach, but then it also looks really effortless and easy breezy when you pair it with jeans, shorts, etc. The linen itself has a really nice texture to it. It's really smooth and does not feel rough at all. But of course, being linen, it is prone to creasing. So you need to be okay with that look. The more that you wash this, it's gonna soften up and have that really nice lived in quality, which is I think what makes linen such an attractive fabric. Aside from the fact that it is breathable and it's mold resistant and it's really durable, of course. The matching shorts, I can't believe are only 30 US dollars. That feels like such a steal exact same fabric as the shirt and they do have that same sort of relaxed fit a really nice wide opening through the leg which i always find to be really flattering uh, i do feel like you can wear these ever so slightly lower or a bit higher because you can adjust them with the tie at the waist too um, and again these are going to crinkle it's just something that uh, you need to be okay with when you are wearing linen but i really cannot fault this set the second outfit that I'm wearing here features the European linen tank, which again is only $30, along with the European linen pants, which are the cropped style. Now, I don't love this set quite as much. However, I do think that there are positives to them. So obviously the fabric is really beautiful. When it comes to the linen tank, I think that this could be a really nice way to inject linen into your work wardrobe because it does feel a little bit more formal because it is more of a structured style. Um, and because of the cut of it, it doesn't really have so much 
room to be effortless and breezy looking. Um, that's just my take, uh, but I can really imagine this looking great with a pencil skirt. It has a little button keyhole closure at the back. The trousers I'm wearing here in the size small, these are a crop style and I will say here from the outset, these are best for people who are on the more petite end of the spectrum or those who have a shorter inseam like myself. I'm 172 centimeters tall for reference, but my inseam is approximately 68 to 69 centimeters to the top of my ankle bone. So hopefully that'll give you a good guide if you have been considering adding these to your wardrobe. I do like that these have the little pocket on the back and they are definitely giving me coastal grandmother. Next, let's talk about their washable silk pieces. So I have the washable silk skirt, which is a midi skirt. The cut of this is very reminiscent of my Realization Pa slip skirt that I have. Um, so it really just kind of skims over the body. I really like the elasticated waistband that you just pull it on and it's very easy to wear. These wash really well too. I actually shared this on my wish list, and so many of you recommended that I add it to my closet and you were all right. One thing I will note is that the sizing is a little bit funny. So I'm wearing the size small here and you can see that there's actually quite a little bit of room at the waistband. And I think this might just be a discrepancy within the size range, which does happen in manufacturing. I personally prefer the way that the midi length looks on me as opposed to the mini skirt, which I have in the kind of champagne color. I find that this kind of cuts off at perhaps the wrong point on my legs. So whenever I put it on, I think especially in the oyster color, it just sort of exacerbates this issue that I've got when I am trying to balance out my proportions and it feels a little bit off. The quality is really nice. It is that sort of silk, which has a beautiful sheen to it. So it looks really luxurious and it's very smooth to the touch. It's 100% washable mulberry silk and the finish is a satin look. Again, I am wearing the mini skirt in the size small too, and you can kind of see that the fit is slightly different. It feels a lot more snug around my waist. One thing to keep in mind, and hopefully you can get this from the cutaways, is that because it is a thinner fabric and it does kind of cling to the body, you aren't really going to be able to tuck anything in that is too bulky. Or if you do want to tuck something in, you're probably going to want to wear something like Spanx underneath that you tuck the item into the Spanx so that it is not visible from the outside. Finally, we have to talk about the Italian leather crossbody bag. I had to throw this in here because I believe that this is one of the best finds on the internet. If you're looking for a good quality leather handbag, that is not going to break the bank. It is $100 US and the quality of the leather is really nice. It is very robust. I purchased the pebbled leather in the black for one of my girlfriends and I know that she absolutely loved it. I do feel like the strap on this is a little bit too long. And when I bought mine, I had to get a couple of extra holes punched in so that I could wear it slightly higher up as it just hung way too low. Also worth noting that mine doesn't have a matching mock croc leather strap. It is a smooth leather strap. That said, I have had some women message me and say that they ordered theirs and theirs came with a mock croc leather strap. So again, it could just be at the time that I ordered mine, the design was ever so slightly different has a cotton twill lining on the inside and there is one small compartment. My son will drag this bag along on the ground because he likes to think any of my handbags are his. I have to hide them from him. Um, but this has not gotten a single scratch despite that. And it's just been well loved. So that little bit of wear and tear where the bag hasn't held its structure 100% does not bother me at all. All right, so those were my thoughts and feelings on the items that I have in my closet from Quince. And I really hope that you found that informative and insightful, that you gleaned some information that perhaps wasn't apparent when just browsing the website or looking at photos online. So I think the big question that you're probably all wondering, especially if you're based in Australia like me, is how on earth did I manage to place an order when they only ship within the US? Now, my secret is using mail forwarding. I have been using mail forwarding to purchase items from the US for, I wanna say around 15 years or so now, definitely more than a decade. And I, in the early stages, it was so that I could buy MAC makeup at a fraction of the price because I think the markup in New Zealand was about three times what it is. Uh, but also after that, it was to access brands that I couldn't actually shop in New Zealand. And then after that, when I moved to Australia, you're in Australia, Everlane being one of the key ones at the time. Now, 
what I use ship it to, I will leave a link down below. I've got a referral code so you can save some money off your first order if you do choose to use mail forwarding. But do keep in mind that there is the risk that you might not like the item that you receive and you will not be able to return it. So that is just something to be wary of if you do decide to take it up. Basically, I will use it if I'm 100% certain I want to purchase an item. If you do live in the US, however, then you're very lucky because I feel like from a value for money perspective, Quince really is unrivaled, especially in the sort of classic wardrobe staples basic space. They do a lot of the same cuts and silhouettes as really well-known brands like uh, Everlane. They have also got some really similar items to things I own from Jenny Kane. I believe Kuyana might even be another brand that they have kind of uh, co-opted styles from as well so you'll be able to find a lot of those looks at a fraction of the price on the Quince website and the quality in my experience has been really good all the fabrics are really soft however do just be mindful of the composition for example the alpaca knit that I'm wearing right now it isn't 100% alpaca it's actually really hard to find 100% alpaca pieces let me tell you uh, this one is blended with a bit of nylon and hang on what's the other it has nylon and wool in it so 44% of this is nylon and I think that is probably what contributes to it being so soft and having such a smooth feel to it. That said my Eveline alpaca knit it's the same thing it's also blended with wool and nylon as well. They have free shipping they have 365 day returns which is fantastic if you don't like something and returns are also free. One suspicion that I have about their $50 cashmere sweater is that this is likely a loss leader from the brand, meaning that they are either breaking even or actually not making any money, maybe making a loss on that item. It's something that I see as being a product that will draw people in to browse the website and potentially make a purchase elsewhere or in another category where they do have some sort of a profit margin. I'm not 100% sure on this, but that to me seems to be uh, the most logical explanation for how you could price a really beautiful quality cashmere sweater at $50. In terms of the styles and silhouettes, they're nothing groundbreaking. They really are quite basic and a lot of you might already have these building blocks in your closet. So it's not really something that you're looking to go out and purchase. That said, if you have a gap or you kind of have something that is worn out, I think it is a really good option. Also, I do think they have some really nice colors for their cashmere sweater. So I think that's kind of my overall review on Quince. If you have any other questions on sizing, on fit, shipping, etc., leave them in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. But a huge thank you for spending some of your day with me. It just means the world. And I'm so grateful that you chose to click on this and watch it because I know this is probably going to be a long one. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.